Hello, thanks for joining me again. Uh, this week's still water pattern is the ever popular competition, the Muskins, uh, invented by Andy Haskins, I believe. So in the hook, I have a Hanak H200 barbless hook. It's in size 10. And the thread I'm going to be using today is the Vivas, and that's in the 50 denier, and it's a clear white thread. So as always with the Vivas, first port of call is the super glue. And I'm just going to give the shank a little touch and cast my thread on about a millimetre or so back from the eye. Then I can come up and I'm going to use my rat's tail as a guide up to just before I think the barb's going to be. Then I can come in and simply snip away my waist. Another couple of turns will see me to where the barb would be. Next then, I'm going to add my tailing fibres. So I'm just using this old cock hackle here. I've taken one of the bigger feathers from the top of the hackle and I'm just going to rip the fibres off. Generous amount. And change it over to my right hand. Dress it up to the hook. And I want it to be about two eighths of an inch past the bend. Quick check, that looks okay. So I can now tie that down. Now that's splaying out really nicely for me there. I don't know if you can notice that. So the fibres have splayed out lovely. If they haven't, I could have simply come round with my thread, caught it up the bend and that would have helped to splay the feathers further. But I'm just going to leave that. I'm fairly happy with it. Now, I'm going to bring my thread back up to the top, about just over an eighth of an inch from the eye. Now, a lot of people use Antron for this pattern. I'm using uh, the very last of my white arrow wing. So I'm just going to cut a length of this off, off camera. So I've got my arrow wing here, it's, it's looking rather unruly at the moment. Uh, and what I want to do with this is just catch it and make a loop. And the reason for this will become apparent later on. But I've got a nice loop there. I'm going to hold it on its side. And a little holding loop. And then once I've got it in, I really want to clamp down on this. Once I've um, got it secured onto the shank of the hook, I'm going to come in with my snips and just try and get a nice angle because I want a taper to the body. And before I go any further, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to tie in my ribbon material now. I've lost the ticket for this, but it's a it's a small copper rib. I've already taken a little bit off. And I'm going to catch that in just where my taper starts to end. Because I can hide that in the body. I bring that all the way up to the start of the tail. And when I drop my thread down, you'll notice that it's in line with where the barb would be. Okay, next, I'm going to use some pheasant tail that I've got here. Take off maybe four or five strands, like so. And you want to catch them in at the tips. So I'll pull that through, transfer it to my left hand, and then catch it in. Like so. And that's all going pretty well. Now I'm going to stop there. So I've stopped my thread about an eighth of an inch back from where um, my loop of aero wing is. Next, I'm going to bring my body up. Just bear with me. 
You've got to take your time with pheasant tail. It's very unforgiving. And if you're too rough with it, it will just snap off in your fingers. I have got a habit of sometimes using hackle pliers when I'm doing this bit of the fly. But these are nice long fibres, so I don't feel the need today. Once I've got it in position, I can lock it down with my thread. Like so. And I want it to be as flat as I can get it. At this point, I'm going to just move them strands out of the way. Move as much of my waist as I can with my snips. And then I can finish by tidying it up. Okay, so now I'm going to bring my rib up in the opposite direction to the way I laid down my pheasant tail fibres. And the rib serves two purposes. It looks like the segmented body parts of a, a buzzer and it also protects your pheasant tail fibres that are in the body. So I've caught that in, just twisted away my wire rib. Next, I'm going to need some more pheasant tail fibres to make a thorax cover. I'm going to take slightly more than I did for the body. And to make my life a little easier, I am just going to snip away the tips here, because I don't need them. So I'm going to catch the tips, well, what's left of the, the tips in here at the body, and then come back to secure in my thorax cover. Now I'm just taking a little bit of time to get this part nice and flat. Now at this point you can use a number of different things. Um, I used to use red holographic but I've started of late using this stuff and it's uh, Hens Body Material and this is the Tinsel Pattern 80. It's pretty obscure, I did get it for rivers, um, but it's a nice, it's a shimmery, it's not a in your face red, it's just a nice subtle colour, but still ha adding that little bit of um, bling to the fly. So I'm just going to catch that in. I remember when Andy gave me this fly, he said, oh, don't tell anyone. Sorry, mate. But uh, I think it's widely available nowadays. I've got a little bit of super glue. And I've just added that to my thorax. And I'm going to bring the red up and through. Now, don't, not much of this is going to be on show. So, I don't need to be too conscientious once I've got it past this point. I can then come over just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And this stuff's very delicate actually, this ribbon, so I can just rip that away. Okie dokie. So, that's looking okay so far. The next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of dubbing. I'm using the Tweak Natural Scruffy Dubbing. And I've already taken a little bit out of the packet. And I'm going to catch that in on my thread. Just dub it on with your fingers. Nice and tight. You don't need very much. And I'm going to start there and come all the way back just making sure only the smallest bit of the red is showing well I'm hoping it's the only smallest bit of the red that you're seeing yeah then the next thing I'm going to do is bring my thread to the front where the eye is and remember we made our loop 
well if I go in now I can now separate that loop with my scissors and I'm only hanging on to one side of the loop so when I work my breathers in like I'm doing now I'm not worried about separating the fibers because I've made the loop I've already done the hard work for myself so I'm just going to take a couple of more turns at the front then bring a thorax cover over the top sweep everything back out of the way and excuse my fingers I'm putting one turn in just to hold it into place so I can let go of the, the thorax cover at the front again once that's secured two or three turns because I'm using the vivas thread I'll get away with a lot more than two or three but that's all I need then I'm going to bring the thorax cover back over the top so everything is now drawn behind and put in a few wraps there and because I've secured that in I should now be able to just pull that away and it's it's come loose no problem at all just going to like my thumb and forefinger to get any innocuous fibers out the way and a trick I'm sure you've seen me do many times now little black pen on the white thread and the tiniest amount of UV resin near the bottom everything back out the way and then you can build a nice little thread head and once you've got that into position use your whip finish tool or a half hitch whichever you prefer bury your thread into the head and then cure your resin off And there you've got a lovely cloaked muskins. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Next, we've got to get the, the breathers to a respectable length. Now, I like to leave a little over an eighth of an inch. Like so. And then, last but not least, take your dubbing brush and just tease out some of your dubbing if you've got any fibre showing you can remove them and they, there you've got your your basic muskins uh, I could varnish the head again or I could simply just add another little drop of UV resin and that'll be the fly finished thanks very much for watching I'll see you next time